Hello, everyone, and welcome back to UCAT Festival TV with me, Colm Cronin. And today I am absolutely delighted to be joined by Dr. George Steele. George, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing well yourself. Uh, I'm not too shabby, of course. Um, this is a, a little bit different this year. Uh, ordinarily, uh, at this time, for an international conference, I, I imagine you would either be in, in the UK or, or making your way over. I would have, if I had my brothers, I would have been over there for a week already. <laughs> have, have you been to the, the UK previously? On several occasions, yes. Um, uh, of course, I attended the, the, the Sheffield uh, International Conference. I was with Dublin. We went back over to, to um, uh, England again and Great Britain. Um, we also stopped by and spent a good deal of time in Scotland. I was doing a lot of family history up there, as I did when we visited in, in Dublin. We went up to um, various parts of Ireland and Northern Ireland doing family history. So, yes, I, I really regret not being able to be there right now. Indeed, but I, I think you kind of done a really fabulous job in terms of putting this uh, virtual festival together. Oh, and I, I like the, the festival team and the, the social events that are accompanying it. And of course, um, you are going to have the, the closing keynote. But before we discuss that, I know one of the things that you're been working on uh, in recently has been some videos uh, in relation to, to flipped advising yes. for those who are interested in that topic or, or even as an introduction or want to get to know more. Maybe you could tell me and viewers a little bit about that. Certainly, I appreciate the opportunity. In foot devising is a concept that really is quite old. And, and one of the things I do in the video is try to show how it is. There, there was a time when uh, advisors um, and advisors advising programs used to use an old thing called workbooks, <laughs> paper and pencil. And the idea was to prepare students before an advising session to help them have a more enriched conversation as a way of having the students interact with information, to consider the information, and be able to reflect on it in such a way so that in the advising session, we have higher order type of, 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 of conversations with our students so we could help them more than using the advising session just to do introductory type of procedural type of issues and, uh, and, and that type of process. So it was to enhance basically the advising session, help the student in the decision-making process because it's a little bit more of a structured approach rather than just saying, it's out there on the web. All you have to do is go out there, there's the click. You know, what does the click mean? What does it mean to process that? Um, and, and actually I was very, very fortunate. I got to work with uh, Dr. Virginia Gordon, um, who you may know is, uh, uh, the person whom Nakata named their uh, one award after at Ohio State. And she really moved forward with this curricular instructional approach. And when the internet came out, we started working on it too. And uh, through use of the internet, no longer relying on paper sources. Uh, and we also worked on it with starting with learning management systems. So the idea was to, to start using this learning technologies in case of you know, learning management systems or uh, virtual uh, learning uh, environments. I think that sometimes people in the UK call them and e-portfolios to help students look at the information, consider it, but mostly tie this in with how they end up by creating their goals and their values and how this is related to those type of approaches so they can proceed with their planning in a more systematic way using curated content because we just don't want them out there picking information left and right just because maybe Uncle Lou talked to him about it over Christmas dinner, right? So we're trying to really get them down to the point of, of using curated content in a structured way to help them with this process. Fantastic. Um, I think you did a really lovely job of explaining that. And if people want to access the content, how can they do that, George? Well, um, fortunately, um, on September 1, uh, Academic Advising Today is going to run an article and in this article um, that uh, I wrote, but I also um, was very fortunate, I was able to interview folks from four different institutions in the United States who've implemented this approach. And each of these videos last between 15 minutes and 30 minutes. Um, and one of the one I did it does sort of the history and an overview and application of how flipped advising really fits into the Nakata concept of, of uh, the concept of advising. 
know, there's learning outcomes, there's a pedagogy of critical thinking, and there's an advising curriculum that aligns the uh, learning outcomes in a way in which, through the curriculum, these could be scaffolded so that students can have a more enriched experience. Um, these movies then really shift to looking at case studies of individuals who have implemented this in different institutions, one for orientation, one person ended up by doing it um, as a way of really um, using the student portal and wrapping these type of learning approaches around the student portal rather than just having a, a series of links. Uh, there's another one where people uh, at the University of Florida in engineering really engage students in reflective thinking about how students develop their goals and what they really want out of college. And then the last example is a really wonderful one by um, a, a faculty member uh, at the University of Portland who uses it with her graduate students. And she's integrated not only her learning management system and e-portfolio, but Google Docs, this entire process to help her graduate students. Fantastic. And uh, I mean, you, you just have so much going on because you you have that coming out, but also the closing keynote now for UCAT. And I really like the, the title, How Tutors Creativity Will Save Tutoring and Advising. Uh, it certainly caught my attention. And um, what, could, what do we have to look forward to in your closing keynote, George? Well, not to give too much away. <laughs> but no, um, I, I think really is helping advisors use the technology tools that we need today, particularly all this has been accelerated with our re having to react to COVID-19. We are all now in the deep end of the technology pool. And so I think advisors are getting more comfortable using the technology, but really tying it back to what advisors and tutors do, they really want to help students with the teaching and learning approach. That's been my experience over my last, I might even tell you how many years in the field of advising, because it makes me feel really old. But at the end of the day, the vast majority of, of, of tutors and advisors I've worked with, they really want to do a teaching and learning approach with their students. And a lot of times they are thwarted by a number of factors in terms of the way maybe tutoring and advising is organized on a particular campus, expectations from higher level administration, but they still persist. And so because they persist, what I'm looking at trying to do is, is talk about that creative process. Um, if they want to find out more about the technical approaches to do flipped advising, um, we've got videos. In fact, I was very fortunate. I got to work with David Gray this summer, and we did a number of workshops on, on uh, technology. Um, we did three workshops uh, for UCAT members on using technology and, and doing a teaching and learning approach um, and meeting the standards of UCAT. Um, but what I wanted to do, take a little bit of a twist on this, because UCAT members also have a wonderful way of looking at their own professional development. And what I sort of want to try to do is to help them begin to um, maybe reframe it and to state it what it is. They are they're artists. I think that's uh, whetted my appetite, certainly, and uh, I am looking forward to uh, hearing the full closing keynote uh, tomorrow. Um, George, I just want to thank you for taking the time to speak to me today. Um, no matter whether I speak to you for five minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, I always feel like I come away having learned something. So thank you. thank you. And I'm sure delegates will get plenty out of it. Um, for those people who are watching this, you can find a whole lot more material about UCAT, about the festival on UCAT's various social media channels. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter and vice versa. But all the details are there. George, thank you again and look forward to seeing you in Dublin, hopefully in the not too distant future. Oh, I look forward to that and sharing a pint with you. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs>